Ozzie and Harriet. So settle back in your easy chairs and enjoy another delightful half hour with all the Nelsons. Ozzie Nelson, of course, plays the part of the head of the Nelson household, Ozzie. And here is his lovely wife, Harriet Nelson, who keeps the family on an even keel. Hello, Harriet. The smiling young teenager we now see is David Nelson, older of the two Nelson boys and played by David Nelson. And here we have the youngest of the Nelsons, the little guy with the twinkle in his eye, Ricky Nelson, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Mr. Thornberry, better known as Ozzie's pal Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. How do you think this tile looks? Just as good as the man that's wearing it. In that case, it all look pretty good. Frank, it's your tie, David. I don't want to wear it. Don't worry, you won't. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just trying this tie on Sylvester here. How do you think it looks? Pretty jazzy, boy. <laughs> I think you're going to an awful lot of trouble just for a school dance. Well, this isn't an ordinary dance. This is a real special deal. Big man. Very social. <laughs> Here, how's that look? Very good. If you ask me, I think you ought to stay home and send Sylvester to the dance. <laughs> Sylvester? Who's Sylvester? Oh, haven't you met Sylvester yet, Mom? May I present my mother? This is Sylvester Coat Hanger, Mother. <laughs> oh, how do you do? Hi, he has a very limp handshake. <laughs> yeah, he's also got on David's good pants. That's how I see. Is that what you're going to wear to the dance, David? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to wear this coat here, too. I hope this outfit looks as good on David as it does on Sylvester here. Yes, yes. <laughs> Who are you taking to the dance, David? A new girl in town, Mom. Oh? What's she like? I don't know. I've never taken her out before. Oh? Sort of a blind date? Well, not exactly. I've seen her before. She just hasn't seen David. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's pretty special. Yeah, she is. I'm lucky to be taking her out. That's the smartest thing you've said all morning. <laughs> but she sounds like a very attractive girl. How did you happen to meet her? Oh, she has a couple of classes with me, and I've been helping her in algebra. You helped her? Yeah, what's wrong with that? What a dope she must be. You're just about passing yourself. <laughs> Why don't you get lost? You think I need a haircut, Mom? No, I think it looks very nice, David. Who's doing your waves this season, dearie? <laughs> Where'd you get lost, will you? You know, now that you mention it, David, I think maybe you could stand a trim in the back. Well, as long as it's not absolutely necessary. I like to save the money if I could. Whoops! Looks if I came in at the wrong time. <laughs> yes, sir. Just mention money and pops right on the spot. Oh, you're not whistling Dixie. Poor old pops always on the spot when it comes to money. Oh. Well, you're so right. It seems the boys could use an advance on their allowance, and I need a couple of dollars for the paper boy and the bread Whoa, bag. Oh, don't go any further. I'll settle for as far as you've gone now. <laughs> That's what I like, a man of action. I'll drink to that. <laughs> See, it looks like your mother's first. She has seniority. What does that mean, Pop? It means Mom's a little older Never than you. Never mind. It means I'm a little bigger than you are. <laughs> Wait, Harry, I have nothing smaller than a five, and I know oh, you I'll only take want to <laughs> Oh, afraid we're in trouble here. I only have a $10 bill left. I'd like to have that same trouble, boy. <laughs> really, Dave? Uh, a $10 bill it is. <laughs> there you are, Pop. $10. Wow. Boy, you've got a lot of money stashed away there, son. Yeah, I've been saving up. Well, here's a couple of dollars for you, Rick. Thanks, Pop. A couple of dollars for you, Dave. Thanks, Pop. This will come in nice and handy. Well, now, look, you guys. Don't you spend that foolishly all in one place? Heck no. I'm going to spend mine foolishly in a lot of places. <laughs> hey, that's quite a bundle David has stashed away there, isn't it? Well, I'm not surprised. Well, what do you mean? Well, he's been taking his lunch to school almost every day for a week now. Oh? And not only that, he never rides the bus anymore. He either walks or he rides with one of his friends. Oh, he must be saving up for some special occasion. Yes, didn't he say something about going to a school dance tonight? Yes, but the tickets are already paid for. I think you may be on the right track, though. Uh, in what way? Well, it seems he's taking some new little girl at school. And evidently, she's pretty hot stuff because David's been helping her with her algebra. And that's just not like David. 
Well, he's probably saving up his money just to make a big impression on this girl at the dance. Uh, who is this little girl, Harry? Do you know her? Well, no, but I'm sure she's very nice if David likes her. Oh, yes, of course. It's just that David is so naive. I'd hate to have him get in the clutches of some little gold digger. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a mercenary female. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you say that, dear. Well, what do you mean? Well, I was just thinking that five dollars you gave me isn't going to go very far, and I thought perhaps you could let me have a couple more. I surrender, dear. <laughs> Oh, hi, Thorny. <laughs> hi. I think this notebook belongs to David. Oh, yeah, that looks like his. Thanks a lot. He left it over at our place last night. He and Will were collaborating a little homework. Oh, I'm glad to know the boys are showing that much interest in their studies these days. Well, I offered Will a little bonus to bring his marks up. You know how kids are this age. He's always a little short of funds. Well, maybe Will is, but by golly, David is loaded. Yeah? Yeah, I wanted to change at 10 this morning, and he had the change for just like that. <laughs> no kidding. Where did yeah. you get it all? Well, evidently, he hasn't spent any money for about six months. He has money stashed all over his room. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> I suppose he's going to the dance over at school tomorrow night. Uh, yeah. He's going to take some new little girl just to arrive in town. Oh. <laughs> I know just what you're thinking, Thorny, and it's not true. What do you mean? Well, I can tell by the expression on your face that you think this little girl is some sort of a gold digger, and that Dave has just been saving up his money so he could squander it at the dance and make a big impression on this girl. <laughs> no, I wasn't, Oz. But now that you mention it, it's just possible that he is saving up to buy our nice Valentine's Day gift. Valentine? Is today Valentine's Day? Well, no, but tomorrow is. Oh, gee, I'm glad you mentioned that, Thorny. As a matter of fact, I'm just on my way downtown to buy Catherine a box of candy. I'll tell you what, Oz. Give me five dollars and I'll buy you a box so you can give to Harriet. Oh, no, no, Thorne. Well, sure, Oz, it'll save you a trip down there. Well, well, uh, it's a very nice thought, but after all, Valentine's Day is a very romantic occasion. And half the sentiment of it is the idea of taking the trouble and the pleasure of going down there and picking out the appropriate present for the one you're so fond of. Okay, Oz, you made the speech. Now, what kind do you want me to get for Harriet? One of those heart-shaped boxes with I love you on it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and Thorny, uh, make sure that it's very delicate and sentimental and romantic looking. Okay. Don't forget, I'm a romantic type fellow. <laughs> I, I just admit it, Oz. I'm a rather practical, mercenary type of fellow. Give me the five bucks first. <laughs> yeah, you go, <dog>, Thorny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have you seen the boys? Yes, I think they're both upstairs. Oh, I have David's notebook. Will Thornberry had it. Oh, well, I'm glad Will found it. David's been looking for it. Oh. Hey. Hey, how about this? Oh, do you think you should be looking through David's notebook? Oh, well, I, I wasn't exactly looking through it, but this page kind of fell open when I was looking through it. I... <laughs> well, after all, I'm the boy's father. Yes, dear, I know. What does it say? Well, it's a list. Perfume, candy, scarf, compact. Well, it sounds like Ricky's spelling list. Sounds to me more like David's sucker list. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious, Harriet, that David's about to squander all his money on this little girl that we don't even know. Well, after all, it is his money, and I'm sure the little girl is very nice. Well, I'm sure she is. It's silly to think of a little girl like that scheming to... I mean, after all, a girl David's age is too young to think of those... Well, I'm sure David can take care of himself. Yeah, I suppose so. After all, it is his money that he saved. What if he does buy her a few rather expensive presents? Is that anything to worry about? Well, you've convinced me. Have you convinced yourself? <laughs> Frankly, no. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. After all, I'm sure David's smart enough to... to... I mean, if he's anything like his old dad, 
which I'm sure he is. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. Poor David. Poor David. Harvey and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Did you get your feet wet today? Were you in a draft from a window or a door or a drafty corridor? Did someone <laughs> sneeze near you, showering germs on you? If any of these things happen today, gargle Listerine quick. Tonight, here's why. Wet feet, drafts of fatigue can lower your body's resistance to colds. Germs in the throat can get the upper hand. A cold can develop. Listerine antiseptic reaches way back in the throat. It kills germs by millions. Clinical tests have shown that germs on mouth and throat surfaces were reduced as much as 96%, even 15 minutes after the Listerine goggle. So be wise. At the first sign of a cold, get after the germs. Whatever else you do, gargle Listerine antiseptic. Quick, gargle Listerine regularly, morning and night. Pa coughed, and Ma coughed, and Junior caught the sniffles. Bill sneezed, and Jill wheezed, and Sister went ka -choo. They called up the doctor and asked for his prescription. Here's what he said to do. Buy Listerine, try Listerine. Bite off germs, gargle Listerine. Buy Listerine, try Listerine. Keep mouth clean without a septic Listerine. Candy. Oh, yeah, the chocolate ones with the fruit centers. Does she like those? I don't know, but I sure do. <laughs> we'll buy this present for Mom. Do you think she'd like a nice bottle of perfume? Don't be a dope, David. You can't eat perfume. <laughs> Listen, Ricky, we're buying something Mom likes, not something you like. Okay, okay. What are we gonna get Dad? I was just wondering about that. I wonder if you're supposed to buy your father a Valentine's Day present. Well, sure, why not? Well, I don't know. Valentine's Day is sort of a sweetheart's day. You know, love stuff. Well, don't you like Pa? Well, sure I like him. I just don't want to embarrass him, that's all. Well, we're going to get Mom something, aren't we? Well, that's different. Mom's your mother. Boy's best friend is his mother. I thought a boy's best friend was his dog. <laughs> you know, the more I think of it, I think we ought to give Pop a present. What do you think he needs? Well, I, could, I know you have one more gift to figure out, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. Say, you know, you may be right after all about this little discussion we had a while ago. Uh, what discussion is that? Well, about David and his little girlfriend that he seems to be so taken with. I was just passing the boys' room just now, and I overheard them talking. Now, I wasn't eavesdropping or anything. No, 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 of course. Uh, what did you hear them say? Well, I heard David tell Ricky that when you really like somebody, it doesn't make any difference how much money you spend on their presents. And he had an awful lot of money there. Well, see, that's what I was telling you about before, Harriet. I think it's perfectly all right for David to buy the little girl a present, but I just don't want him to do anything silly. Well, that's how I feel about it. Maybe I ought to have a little talk with him, huh? Personally, I think he just ought to buy her a nice corsage. If that isn't enough for her, then I feel she's definitely not the girl for David. Well, maybe I shouldn't have told you about it. Oh. After all, it is his money. Yeah, well, yes, I, I know, but we don't want him played for a good thing, either. Say, I have a thought. Maybe Ricky could mention the corsage idea to him. Ricky? Yes, the boys seem to talk over most of those things, and you could tell Rick how you feel, and he could act as sort of a go-between. Yeah, that might be a pretty good idea at that. You wait right here, and I'll tell him that you want to see him. Did you want me, Pop? Oh, hi, Rick. Uh, yeah, uh, sit down for a second, son. Uh, where's David? He's outside playing basketball. Do you want to see him? No, no. But what I have to tell you concerns David. Oh, is something wrong, Pop? No, not especially. See how I can put this. Well, every once in a while, there's something that you want to tell somebody, but it's of a rather delicate nature, 
So rather than to risk hurting the person's feelings, you tell it to a third person and have him relay the information. Do you follow what I mean? Oh, sure, Pa. Like the time I got that bad report card and I asked Edie Schwartz to tell you. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, uh, that's uh, sort of the same idea. Well, first of all, I happen to know that David has been saving up a great deal of money lately. He sure has. And also, I happen to know that he has in mind buying a rather expensive gift for somebody with part of that money. Yeah, it was supposed to be a secret, Pop. Well, I just happened to find out about it, and I thought I'd tell you what I think he ought to buy, and then you can pass the information on to David. Sure, that's well. He'd like to know. Well, to begin with, I'm against spending too much money. See, it's much better to buy an inexpensive but appropriate gift. Something that really expresses the sentiment of Valentine's Day. Like what, Pop? Well, I had in mind uh, a nice corsage. What's a corsage? A corsage is a, a bunch of flowers that you pin to your shoulder, you wear across your shoulder. Yeah, it sounds kind of sissy to me. Oh, no, no, not at all. After all, Valentine's Day is a very sentimental occasion, and there's nothing expresses sentiment better than flowers. You mean you really want him to buy a corsage? Yes, I do. I don't think you could buy anything that would be more appropriate. Okay, if you say so, Pa. I thought it'd be better if I stay out of this, you see, and you tell David about it. Oh, sure, Pa. He'll be happy to know what you want him to buy. But I don't think he'll believe it. Well, you just tell him what I said. Okay, Pa. I'll tell him. boy. You sure you want him to buy a corsage? Yes, I, I'm positive. Pa? Yes? Did you really play football in college? <laughs> Come on, we can hide him in the hall closet. Why can't we give him to Mom and Pop now? Because Valentine's Day isn't until tomorrow. Oh, come on, David. I can't wait that long. I told you, we'll give him to him tomorrow. Hi, boy. Well, hi, Ma. Hey, Mom. Well, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's like a little excitement around here, huh? Well, the boys seem to have something mysterious going on. Oh, secrets, eh? Yeah, we're hiding your presents. <laughs> oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, what's this about presents? Yeah, David, what's this about presents? <laughs> well, we might as well show you. Come on into the den. Yeah, we might as well show you. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I'll say it is. Yeah, this is for you, Mom. Oh! Happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's a little ahead of time, but I'm always happy to receive a gift from my two boyfriends. Well, come on, open it up. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a box of my favorite chocolates with the fruit centers. Yeah, I'm glad you like them, too, Mom. If you need any help eating those, Mom, you sure don't have to look any farther. <laughs> <laughs> and this is for you, Pop. For me? Well, boys, you shouldn't have done it. I don't think we should have either, but that's what Ricky said you wanted, Pop. I hope it's all right. Well, this certainly is a surprise. I had no idea you fellas were going to give me a... <laughs> What's this? It's a croissant, Pop. That's what Ricky said you wanted. <laughs> you did want a croissant, didn't you, Pop? Sounded awful funny to me, but that's what Ricky said. Oh, well, you see, when Ricky spoke to me about buying a, a Valentine's present, I thought he meant... Well, I mean, you see, uh, David was saving up all that money. Well, boys, I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. Uh, no, no, just a second, Harriet. Uh, what makes you think so? Well, hasn't there been? Oh, uh, I'm uh, not so sure. Now, now let's uh, think this over for a minute. Do you mean you wanted a corsage for Valentine's Day? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yes. I mean, uh, well, that is... Oh, oh, now I get it. I see how clever of you. Oh! <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. Uh, uh, how was it clever of me? I, I mean, uh, uh, you tell the boys. Well, you see, boys, your father may believe that he wanted a corsage for himself, when actually he wanted to give it to me. Oh, uh, yes, yes. You, you see, fellas, uh, Valentine's Day is a very sentimental occasion. And I kind of had a little hunch that you boys were going to get a present for me. <laughs> Well, you certainly are clever, dear. Yeah, we didn't even know we were getting them one until a little while ago. 
Or do you think actually this is a gift from your three boyfriends together? Well, you certainly fooled me. Uh, <laughs> well, I have my moments. Then you weren't really worried about the little girl at all. What little girl, Mom? The little girl you're taking to the dance tomorrow night. You mean Marilyn? What's she got to do with it? Oh, uh, well, your mother kind of got the idea that you've been saving up all your money to buy this little girl an expensive present. Gee, what for? Well, you're taking her to the dance tomorrow night, and it would be nice if you gave her something for Valentine's Day. Golly, that's right. Look, I have an idea. Since you gave me the corsage, why don't you give her the candy? What's this? <laughs> Well, anyway, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> hi, folks. Oh, hi, Hi, Sarnie. Hi, Sarnie. What's the present, Sarnie? Oh, it's just a little something Oz had me pick up for him. Now, don't be so nosy, Harriet. Just a little St. Valentine's Day surprise. Oh, I'll take it, Thorny. Thank you. What is it, Pop? Oh, just a box of candy, David. I love you. <laughs> Look at the corsage Ozzy gave me for Valentine's Day, Thorny. Well, uh, Oz, I bought the box of candy. Oh, well, gee, Thorny, I was going to wait until tomorrow, but... Oh, gosh, you wouldn't be a surprise now anyway. So here, happy Valentine's Day to you, Thorny. <laughs> <laughs> you mean this is for me? Well, sure, what'd you think it was for? <laughs> <laughs> gosh, I thought it was for Harriet. Oh, uh, I've been fooling everybody today. <laughs> you see, that's what I meant you to think. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Oz, I didn't think you cared. Uh, no, 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 Tony, I'm kind of a sentimental guy at heart. Oh, gosh, Oz. This is a great big surprise. Uh, and look, I know you didn't get anything from me, but don't worry, it's perfectly okay, I understand. No, no, you're wrong, Oz. I do have a present for you. Here, hold this. Really? Actually, I was going to wait until tomorrow, but since you've given me mine, I may as well uh, give you yours. <laughs> there you are, Oz. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. Oh, Barney, we shouldn't have done it. Oh, oh, a beautiful tie. How about this? Oh, Barney, I can't accept this. No, 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 please do, Oz. This was a Christmas present for my mother-in-law. <laughs> Barney, I'll try it on. All right? You know, this is the first time Mr. Thornbury and Pop have given each other Valentine's presents. Well, this is the first time your father ever had you boys buy him a Valentine to give to me. <laughs> this is the first time I ever bought a Valentine to give to myself from somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's Day sure is a confusing holiday, boy. <laughs> Ozzy and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Children love the fresh, lively flavor of Snow White minty Listerine toothpaste. So it's nice to know that no other leading dentifrice, no chlorophyll product, can do more for them and for you than Listerine toothpaste. Because Listerine toothpaste gives you Listerine special ingredient luster foam. Can help your toothbrush cut down tooth decay as much as 60%. Keep your mouth clean and fresh for hours. And look at the money you save. This thrift pack gives you not one, but two big 45-cent tubes for only 59 cents. That's right, 90 cents worth of Listerine toothpaste for only 59 cents. Listerine toothpaste is your best buy by far, so buy now. David? Yes, ma'am. Hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Well, how was the dance? Oh, swell. Well, that box of candy sure made a big hit with Marilyn. What's this? Well, don't you remember? You suggested I give her the box of candy for a Valentine's present. Oh, yes. Well, I'm glad she liked it. She sure is a nice girl. Very considerate and very diplomatic. In what way, dear? Well, she didn't even say a word about the whole top layer being missing. <laughs> Before we say goodnight, I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking the editors of TV Radio Life magazine for selecting our television show as the best comedy show of 1952. We're very happy. And those are my sentiments exactly. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs>